SDR News. And if you've been following us, you know we've been talking about all sorts of HP products. We've been talking about uh, cloud. We're going to be talking now about enterprise services. And we have uh, two gentlemen uh, with us as well. We've got uh, Jim Coop Cooper here to, to the far left and J.D. Dudley as well. well. So briefly, what are the roles that you play in uh, enterprise services? Yeah, so Andy, I'm a uh, distinguished technologist in uh, the Enterprise Services Chief Technology Office, and I uh, focus on uh, mobility and workplace, and uh, you know how we evolve that to address uh, the new styles of IT that we see emerging in um, not only enterprise uh, customers, but also moving down into the corporate and even into the mid-size uh, market. Yeah. So that's uh, your role. Yes, yeah, so I'm a Chief Technologist in the EMEA Office of the CTO and uh, specifically uh, supporting uh, customers in Germany. So it's, it's about uh, helping them uh, move towards this new style of IT and uh, evolve uh, this path. So a lot of talk about defining the new style of, uh, of IT, and it's not uh, an instantaneous process, it's a journey. Is Absolutely. that correct? Absolutely. Uh, for example, uh, JD can probably tell you how many applications, legacy applications, uh, the customers that he's working uh, with. So you're not going to instantaneously uh, move um, uh, customers that have potentially thousands of legacy applications to a new style. So uh, that journey is very important, but we also want to start customers that are more advanced, that can move quicker uh, and have that in place uh, on that new style. You moving from um, sort of the legacy applications to more of a, a mobile-enabled application where um, uh, corporations can allow their employees to engage uh, with their customers. And it's really business-centric as opposed to technology-centric. Is that correct? Or is Absolutely. that a part of it? Uh, no, very much business-centric uh, versus process-centric. Ah, okay. um, so one of the things uh, you might recall, Andy, from 20 years ago, uh, was it was all about IT and IT's decisions uh, and rather than uh, individuals, individual business units. And in fact, we still see some enterprises where IT departments make uh, decisions and expect uh, their users to come. Uh, whereas uh, more uh, progressive uh, customers are now thinking about how do I generate value how do I increase revenue? How do I increase customer loyalty? How do I expand my market share based upon what IT can provide? And I might add to that, how do I attract the young talent that is used to a certain level of service? Absolutely, and I, I do a lot of work uh, with a, um, a school in the U.S. Uh, that the amount of talent coming out of their business school, uh, even with information service, is just amazing. Uh, things, uh, even in office uh, types of applications that uh, old guys like me, uh, you know, sort of, uh, hey, that's a little bit different than the old uh, uh, VisiCap type of uh, application. Uh, but, you know, they're very, uh, the new talent is very social. Um, almost to an extreme. I, I don't do well in 140 characters. Uh, I do think that uh, we need to teach our uh, university students to use complete sentences and, and use correct spelling, but I know watching my son who's in university uh, that uh, U is spelt with a U instead of Y-O-U. Right. So is this a North America problem or is this uh, around the world? I think this is definitely around the world. I'm working a lot with uh, students, uh, engage uh, them explicitly to, to, to really support us in this in this new style to help us uh, understand how these guys uh, how these guys uh, think uh, because I think it's also uh, very helpful um, to, to embrace this uh, in the enterprise world because uh, there uh, this is uh, they're really the important point to, to move to, to this new style and uh, and, and uh, uh, utilize uh, this, this benefits from that. So HP is obviously demonstrating leadership here, but are others in the industry beginning to come on board as well? I think that we'll see uh, lots of uh, suppliers. Uh, we can even roll back uh, to a few years ago whenever we moved from uh, legacy desktop to the smartphone revolution uh, and what that brought to the industry. It was sort of an eye-opener to the uh, the legacy, and, and sometimes we can look at HP and say maybe HP uh, was relying uh, too much, or maybe we were under investing in R&D. Lots of uh, history there, as you well know. Uh, but I think that the eye opener was uh, the introduction of smartphones, introduction of tablets, not necessarily the operating system. We get uh, over the past few years 
fixated on uh, what operating system a person. It's more about the application and how the application engages with the user. Uh, now that brings new challenges. Uh, you know, we have the whole bring your own uh, phenomena, and that brings up the challenges on how I protect my assets. And of course, in my country, we have lots and lots of lawyers that love uh, doing uh, liability suits. Uh, so you can think about improper use of an application, improper use of data, uh, corporations capturing by accident uh, personal information and what uh, that could actually impact. So that's a new, another element uh, uh, of the new style of IT is how do we protect uh, the assets uh, and who should be protecting the assets. We have individual uh, responsibility for our personal information, but how do we protect that from the corporation? How does the corporation protect its assets from the individual? Uh, J.D., you, you draw a distinction between systems of record and right. systems of engagement. Can, can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, uh, systems of records is basically uh, the, old, the old stuff that we know from databases, ERP systems, all this, everything in a, in a, in a data center. And uh, it, is, uh, it, is not, um, it is interactive in, in a way, but the uh, system of engagement is really engaging with the customer, engaging with the people out there. So it's, in, it's, so it's basically outside the firewall. And how do you integrate with that? And how to integrate that with the back office uh, world, with the data center world, to bring that all together. So that's that's the key thing, which is uh, driving the change. So, so what are the consequences if if you have if you execute poorly, or if you don't even have a vision of how to manage these two initiatives? Well, uh, basically, we have uh, done some research, uh, which really uh, shows that that uh, if you do engage, um, that definitely will show uh, on the bottom line. Basically, it brings much closer the, the customer to you. And, uh, and also, this is why we coined the, the, the term the era of the customer, because really, uh, customer expect, and that is also driven by the, the consumerization of IT term, um, it really drives um, expectations out there. And if you don't embrace that, you will be uh, left behind, basically. Okay, so maybe to summarize, you have actually four drivers that are underlying. What are, what are those? Obviously, cloud. Yeah. Uh, mobility. Right. Uh, uh, JD, you want to you want to uh, finish the other two? Or yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's uh, it's the security part uh, that you already mentioned, uh, and it's obviously based on this uh, on this uh, big reach. Uh, it's it's the big data part. So uh, based on uh, new uh, a lot of devices out there, but also sensors and everything, you have. Uh, uh, a high amount of data and you need to be able to analyze, to use and utilize them to your benefit. That's the key driver. So, so what does HP bring to the table that's, that's at this point, unique in comparison with competitors? Yeah, so uh, our labs, uh, so I think people are starting to get familiar that yes, HP is investing in R&D. Uh, that may not have been the case uh, three or four years ago. I think uh, most the analysts, the populace uh, had forgotten that HP Labs was a premier research organization. So a couple of research uh, areas that they are really focusing on is cloud, security, testability. How do we make sure whenever we use a smartphone and we connect to a service that it is actually secure, that we really are connecting to the correct cloud versus being spoofed? Uh, I'm sure that in the past week, past day, past hour, you may have gotten spam mail on, uh, hey, uh, your loan's due, uh, hey, uh, you've got a, a, a new uh, credit card. The Just the quantity of um, spam with uh, illicit uh, phishing types of URLs. And whenever you click on that, today, you're infected. What we want to be able to do is improve the security so whenever you initiate a transaction, you know what's going on. I think another area that we're doing a lot in the workplace and mobility space is really rapidly moving towards embracing lots of devices, not just a single operating system, not just the, the latest and greatest uh, mobile phone, but whatever device that you want to use, you should be able to conduct your business in a secure fashion. Now, there are limitations. We probably don't want Meg 
reviewing quarter in financials on the kiosk in the uh, in the hotel <laughs> lobby. Uh, so we do need to incorporate uh, some common sense geolocation and the, and the type of device based upon the role. So again, doing a lot of work in being able to apply security controls. And really, what we're uh, looking for in the management area is not so much the rigor. Yes, we'll have large commercial customers. Yes, we do a lot in public sector around the world. Yes, we do a lot with military. But what we really want in the mainstream now is to have decoupled management, allow the IT security or the risk management to apply the controls. Uh, let the person who is buying the application define who can use the application and see how it's being consumed and how it's being used versus going to that one a mystical, magical door at the end of the hall that says desktop management on it and, and slipping a piece of paper underneath the door and hoping for the best. Right. So it, it sounds like the, the highest level enterprise service that you're providing is really uh, helping people to clarify their vision of where their business is going and then integrating the technology mm -hmm. uh, to make that possible. Absolutely. Yeah. It, where, where, where's the best place for people to go to learn more about uh, uh, this aspect of HP? So, uh, www.hp.com slash services. Okay. Well, I'm sorry we need to cut things short, but uh, thanks very much for Absolutely. joining Love us to come back. here today. Thanks to you yeah. folks for uh, joining us as well on our continuing coverage of HP Discover from Barcelona. <laughs>